Thanks, Griff. Back to our top story now. For more on the latest from Israel, we're joined by spokesperson for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Tal Heinrich. Uh, Tal, thank you so much for being here. The, the first thing I wanted to discuss with you is that Fox News has confirmed the New York Times reporting that part of the slowdown of getting um, some of these foreign uh, foreigners evacuated out of Gaza is that Hamas, that it was discovered, was actually trying to sneak in Hamas fighters under the guise of being the wounded Palestinians. What is the prime minister's response to this? Well, we know that this method has been tried in the past by Hamas. And by the way, it's not only us saying it. Even uh, the Palestinian Authority, President Mahmoud Abbas, invoked uh, that method in one of his previous speeches in, in the past. So it's a known method. And uh, for that reason, we are monitoring every movement. And for that reason, the IDF is also targeting uh, the terrorist movements once we, we lock in on them. And we, are, uh, we have evidence that they are uh, trying to move around the Gaza Strip sometimes and you know cynical uses of vehicles as ambulances uh, serving as taxis in fact for their uh, murderous actions so we are watching every movement yeah and it makes it ever more complicated and president biden the biden administration is calling for a humanitarian pause to help get hostages out prime minister netanyahu as you have mentioned has rejected that but this 3 hour window today could that be interpreted that israel is willing to pause if needed well, we are willing to pause. As we said, there will be a cessation of activity as we've had in, in the past. Excuse me, there's a crazy flag here. Oh. Um, so so, um, so we, we've had a, a cessation of activity uh, in, in the past when Hamas released two hostages, then two more hostages, and we wanted to facilitate their exit from Gaza. And we said once they release more hostages, it will happen again. Uh, and, and we're waiting to see it. We want, we want to see all hostages uh, being released, and we're calling on Hamas to do so unconditionally and immediately. But in terms of a, a bigger ceasefire, it's not something that's even negotiable. We said that our goal is to eliminate the Hamas regime and, uh, and to bring back the hostages home. Well, how does Israel see the distinction between a humanitarian pause and a ceasefire? Again, a humanitarian pause is something that we are, of course, willing to discuss once more hostages will be released from the Gaza Strip. We want to facilitate the safe exit of hostages once there will be uh, something of this kind on the table. Of course, you will hear about it, and nobody but us will be more uh, satisfied and thrilled once this happens. But right now, uh, it's, not, it's not something that we are really discussing. But in terms of humanitarian aid, it is something that both Jerusalem and Washington obviously want to see the civilian population in Gaza receiving. For that reason, we said that we will allow in uh, uh, humanitarian aid and dozens of trucks are coming in every day uh, from the Rafah border crossing with Egypt to the safer havens that we have designated for the population in, in the south. So, as you know, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting with Arab leaders in Jordan on the heels of his trip to Israel. Axios is reporting that behind the scenes in Israel, Blinken emphasized the increasing pressure on the U.S. to push for humanitarian pause. From the report, quote, Blinken's message, according to one U.S. and two Israeli officials, was, quote, we don't want to stop you, but help us help you get more time. I understand that you're limited in what you can say on meetings, but is there a concern that there could could be daylight peeking through between U.S. and Israel. There is no daylight between the U.S. and Israel. We are in lockstep with our American counterparts uh, in terms of uh, in what pertains to the goals of this operation, which is to bring back the hostages, as, as, as I said, and also, of course, to eliminate the Hamas a terrorist regime as a governance body in Gaza, as a terrible military wing, terrorizing not only us, but also the population there. Um, everyone wants to see humanitarian aid reaching the Palestinian civilians. And um, we are also discussing, by the way, with our partners, the future for Gaza for the day after. There are different contingencies that are being discussed right now. And uh, we hope that once Hamas will be eliminated, this uh, will make the population in Israel uh, way more secured, of course, and bring safety to the residents of, of southern Israel, but also bring new opportunities for the Palestinian people, should they choose differently and understand that terrorism is a dead end. Tal Heinrich, thank you so much for being here today and providing us with this update. Thank you.